Hello everyone, I'm John Spinks, Principal Marketing Manager from the Management Business Unit and your host for What's New in Red Hat Satellite 6.5. I wanted to take a few minutes and talk about some of the new features available with the latest version of Red Hat Satellite. Red Hat Satellite is a scalable platform to manage patching, provisioning, and subscription management of your Red Hat infrastructure, regardless of where it's running. On screen, you see the satellite graphic, which captures the primary use cases for satellite. Let's talk through these use cases and cover the advantages of using Red Hat Satellite. Content management is the base capability on which much of satellite is built. This enables you to get and curate content from a variety of sources. Then you can do creative things with it, like provision and patch. Satellite supports any content type, RPMs, ISOs, binaries, and containers. This can be Red Hat or third party. Satellite has powerful controls around the curation of content, enabling you to create things like content views. Curation is being able to take an approved subset of the content and make it available to your hosts. It also enables distribution of content, putting content as close to the endpoint as possible through the use of capsule servers. For example, if you have access to all RHEL content, you can make only the security content available to certain hosts. Patch management helps you identify hosts in your environment that need fixes, updates, or that have vulnerabilities. It can also help you to identify what systems have had patches already installed. Through satellite, you can group homogeneous systems so that you can easily work with them in subsets. Using Ansible and remote execution, you can patch all of the systems in your environment quickly and easily. If you need to patch 50,000 systems at the click of a button, you can do it with satellite. Satellite enables you to provision to bare metal, virtual machines, private and public clouds. Most organizations have some mix of bare metal, virtual, and cloud environments. Satellite allows users to connect to all of these and give the ability to create VMs, virtual instances and clouds, power on bare metal machines, and more. Satellite has the ability to integrate into existing infrastructure services like DNS, DHCP, and identity platforms, automating what normally would be a multi-step process. You can import or discover non-provisioned hosts in satellite. Discovery is a means to set up the networking infrastructure so that when new systems are brought in, you can simply turn them on and those servers will show up in satellite as new systems to manage. You can automate using post-provisioning steps using Red Hat Enterprise Linux system roles. Most enterprises know that they must keep track of all of their software and hardware assets. Satellite collects a large number of facts about systems, such as server hardware inventory, the date brought online, decommission date, and more, giving users one place to look for inventory and utilization information. Satellite can also track hardware and similar assets and report on consumption, enabling you to maintain an accurate inventory and utilization information. You can also report on subscription consumption on a group by group basis. For example, given the subscriptions that you have purchased from Red Hat, this is the consumption of those subscriptions. Say you're using 92 of 100 Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscriptions. In a multiple organization satellite, you can report on a specific organization or any arbitrary subset. For example, in organization one and two, show me all systems that have Rev in their subscriptions, or show me all systems that have greater than two sockets and use a RHEL subscription. In addition to these main use cases, Satellite also enables configuration management using Ansible or Puppet, helping to define the state of systems, automation through interaction with Ansible Tower to use satellites as an inventory as well as call post-provisioning playbooks from Tower. And Satellite uses OpenSCAP for monitoring compliance for policies such as PCI or FIPS. These are additional capabilities that help to differentiate Satellite. If you are using Satellite in the ways described, 
your results will be that you're able to maintain a standard operating environment through standardizing and automating your patching and provisioning with satellite. Your environment will be reliable and resilient through the use of Red Hat Insights that will help you identify and resolve vulnerabilities. And your environment will be secure through vulnerabilities, patching, and open SCAP you know your systems will be patched, up-to-date, and compliant with security policies. And you'll have confidence that your deployment of workloads is in accordance with what you have purchased, including knowledge of if you're over or under-deployed. While how you buy satellite hasn't changed, it is worth touching on this for a moment. Red Hat Satellite is purchased through Smart Management. Red Hat Smart Management allows you to easily manage your Red Hat Enterprise Linux system, on-premise or in the cloud, whichever works best for your needs. Red Hat Smart Management combines the flexibility and powerful infrastructure management capabilities of Red Hat Satellite with the simplicity of cloud management services for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Cloud management services for Red Hat Enterprise Linux is a new offering, also included with Smart Management, but it will not be covered in this video. When you purchase your Smart Management subscription, you get quantity 50 of MCT3718. This lets you consume 50 of any combination of satellite servers and capsule servers, enabling you to add more satellites for test or dev, add capsules in the cloud, or add load balance capsules, whatever you need. 50 is more than what 99% of satellite customers need. And if you do need more, contact your Red Hat representative. It should also be noted that Satellite integrates really well with Red Hat Insights. All smart management customers have access to Insights since it's included with your Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription. Let's talk about the new features in Satellite 6.5. The high level theme of the Satellite 6.5 release is making sure that Satellite 6.5 can do all the things with Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 that it can do with older RHEL versions, as well as enhance security by enabling Satellite to install on Federal Information Processing Standard or FIPS enabled RHEL 7 hosts. Let's start with covering the capabilities that Satellite has for Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. Satellite 6.5 supports patching and provisioning of RHEL 8 hosts, just like you would expect. It also supports some of the new RHEL 8 features, such as applications or module streams, system purpose, and system roles. Satellite 6.5 is the release that you must be running if you plan to manage Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 hosts. While it is possible that some aspects of Satellite might work with RHEL 8 in an older Satellite release, you should plan to upgrade to Satellite 6.5 in order to be in a supported configuration. It should also be noted that satellite and capsule servers in version 6.5 must still be installed on a RHEL 7 host. Support for installing and running satellite and capsules on RHEL 8 hosts will come in a later version of satellite. Here you can see all hosts within satellite. I'm using a RHEL 8.0 operating system and my system purpose is matched. We can of course patch RHEL 8 systems just like you would expect and we can easily provision RHEL 8 systems just like we can do with all other RHEL releases. Satellite 6.5 supports RHEL 8 module streams or application streams, as you may be familiar with the term. RHEL application streams use modules to provide visibility and management of RHEL 8. While within the RHEL documentation, you may see this referred to as application streams or app streams, inside Satellite, these are referred to as module streams, but that capability is the same. System purpose is very useful with subscriptions, enabling you to identify to RHEL the purpose of a host, and in turn, Satellite can understand the system purpose and consume the right type of subscription for that host. This means that you would no longer consume a RHEL server subscription for a host that's using RHEL Workstation. Just identify the system purpose and Satellite will consume the correct subscription. And RHEL system roles are essentially Ansible playbooks that enable you to configure a system simply and easily using the power of Ansible automation. And RHEL system roles are essentially Ansible playbooks that enable you to configure a system simply and easily using the power of Ansible automation. 
To share a little about what the future holds in terms of Satellite and RHEL 8, Satellite 6.5 will support clients running RHEL 8, but with 6.5, Satellite itself must still be installed on RHEL 7. Satellite 6.6 will allow you to run Satellite or Capsules on RHEL 7 or RHEL 8. After that initial 6.6 release, it is expected that some of the new Satellite features will only work if your Satellite and Capsules are running on RHEL 8. This could even be a Z-Stream release of Satellite. To help make adoption of RHEL 8 easier for you, Satellite will help you migrate your Satellite running on RHEL 7 to Satellite running on RHEL 8. This again will be in a post-Satellite 6.6 release. And eventually, Red Hat Satellite and Capsules will only run on RHEL 8. We'll still support clients on older RHEL versions, but due to the six-month cadence of Satellite, you should consider deploying your Red Hat Satellite on RHEL 8 sooner than you may have considered such a thing in past releases. Let's cover some of the security-related changes in Satellite 6.5. One of the big features in Satellite 6.5 is that we enable the ability to install Satellite on a FIPS-enabled host. As mentioned earlier, Satellite and Capsules in version 6.5 are installed on RHEL 7 still, not on RHEL 8. With this feature, Satellite inherits the FIPS level of RHEL. There are a couple important things to be aware of in regards to FIPS. You need to do a fresh install of Satellite on a FIPS-enabled RHEL 7 host. You cannot take an existing RHEL 7 host with Satellite installed and then enable FIPS. Also, if you enabled FIPS on Satellite, you must enable FIPS on all capsules connected to that Satellite. You cannot mix and match. Import-export of content from a FIPS-enabled satellite to a non-FIPS-enabled, or vice versa, works as expected, and there's no impact. In addition to the FIPS support, we've added a new view in OpenSCAP that enables you to easily see when hosts fail a specific OpenSCAP rule. A satellite admin role has also been introduced that enables you to create a new user type that can manage the satellite infrastructure and create new organizations but that user can't manage the hosts. This is useful if you have a specific security requirement on an organization, perhaps in a country where only citizens of that country can manage the hosts. We've also made improvements in the area of content management. Satellite 6.5 has the concept of a container admin. This is a collection of enhancements to help container admins in their day-to-day -day lives when working with containers. Container admin enables new features like repository enhancements, Docker repository discovery, where you can search a registry for image names and create a local repository from the search results, a new authenticated registry, and customized image naming. Today, these are pull, but not push requests. Satellite 6.5 is also adding the ability to export not only the content, but the content views themselves. This is designed for the disconnected use case where you have a satellite in an air-gapped environment. You can set up your content views the way that you need them in your primary satellite, export the content view, which includes the content and the metadata, then import that content into the air-gapped environment. For example, let's say you have two separate satellite environments. On the right, the Atlanta data center has hosts that are connected to a capsule, which in turn is connected to the satellite. The satellite is connected to the internet to download the latest content from Red Hat or whatever content source you need. You also have an isolated data center, configured in much the same way, but no access to the internet. This environment is disconnected, air-gapped, isolated, whatever term you like to use. Your main satellite in the Atlanta data center downloads the content and the satellite admin organizes that content into content views as needed. The satellite admin then exports that content to a thumb drive, an optical disk, or whatever media is allowed. The data is then imported into the satellite in the isolated data center. It should be noted that this process imports the content as well as the metadata that makes up the content view. If you're exporting a content view version, then the content view needs to already exist on the hosts where you're importing the content view and any underlying repositories do need to already exist before you import a content view version. 
This will greatly simplify the import and export of content views, helping to keep satellites and capsules that are in disconnected environments as close to the main satellite as possible. Next, let's talk a little bit about supportability changes. Satellite 6.5 includes support for Infoblox IPAM. We've also made a major change to how we support cloud providers with satellite. Cloud access customers can deploy satellite or capsules on most major cloud providers. Note that this is support for deployment of satellite and does not include provisioning. To delve a little bit more into detail, when you ask if you can use satellite in the cloud, you typically mean one of three things. Can I install and run satellite or capsules in a cloud environment? Can I manage hosts that are deployed via a cloud provider? Or can I provision hosts from satellite in this cloud provider? If you are using any one of the cloud providers listed on the screen, you can run satellite or manage hosts that are deployed in that cloud provider. Provisioning of hosts into a cloud provider is currently only supported with Amazon AWS and Google Compute Engine. If you're using a cloud provider that's not listed, please check with your Red Hat representative as a support exception may be required. Another new feature in Satellite 6.5 is an all new reporting engine. This includes pre-canned reports for host status, subscriptions, registered host, and a placable errata. You can customize any of these reports or even create your own. Here's an example of what those report templates look like. And if I create a clone, for example, of the subscriptions report, you can modify this to suit your specific needs. In addition to all these big named features, we also have what we're calling little bites, some small things that can really help to make a big difference. Some examples, we've made it easier to search for repositories and simplified repository selection. We've also made it easier for you to preserve VMs when deleting compute resources. We've moved our sync plans from Pulp to Catello, and we've added some Ansible playbook capabilities to the Bootstrap script. For next steps, if you're getting ready to upgrade to Satellite 6.5, check out the Upgrade Helper. This is available in the labs area. It's really great because it provides some additional information on the upgrade that's a little bit more tailored to your specific environment. If you are using Satellite 5.8 or earlier, Satellite 5.8 does go end of life in May 2020, and all older versions of Satellite 5 are already end of life. So we do recommend that you start your transition to Satellite 6 as soon as possible. If you are using Satellite 6.2 or older, those versions are all also end of life, and we encourage you to move to the latest version of Satellite 6. We have a huge list of resources, including our blogs, our product pages, and we do have new training available. RH053 is a satellite technical overview. If you have anybody that's brand new to satellite, wants to learn the very basics, that's available through Red Hat or also on Udemy. And there's, of course, our H403, which is our Red Hat Satellite 6 administration course. Thank you very much for your time and attention and hope you've learned a little bit about what's new in Satellite 6.5.